Hello, this is Eric Colburn from ericcolburn.com, and in this AutoCAD Civil 3D for Land Surveys video, we'll be going over manual point creation. So every once in a while, you might be given an AutoCAD file from somebody else that you'd like to create points on the objects in that, that drawing, or you have a recorded plat, and you put that geometry into AutoCAD Civil 3D, so A, you can check the geometry, make sure it closes, which is always a best practice, and B, create points where monuments are shown on that record plat so that you can uh, facilitate looking for those monuments in the field. So what I've done is taken the approach that this is a record plat that I've created uh, six parcels and that there's also a house positioned on the lot that we want to uh, lay out in the field. So on this plat, what I am doing is saying that there was already called for at each corner an iron pipe. So I want to create points at the endpoints of all these lines and put an iron pipe uh, point there with that description. And then for the house, I want to create a point at each house corner so that uh, we can lay that out at the appropriate time. So I guess the first thing to make your life easier is to make sure that you have the snap command set to run so that the object snap is on. You can always hit F3 for that. And to know generally what you'll be snapping to because it, it makes it more accurate and simplifies your life. So in this case, I know that it's the end point of line. So I'm only going to turn on end points. Now, I don't have a lot of things in this drawing, but if I had other points in it, then, you know, leaving node on, you might click on the wrong thing. If the objects I was clicking on in this drawing were maybe the center of circle objects, then, then, then definitely turn on center so that you can easily uh, snap to those um, and get the point where you want it to be. But again, I am just going to be using endpoint. Click OK. And then on the home tab of the ribbon, you can see here that there's a points drop down list. And the top option is point creation tools. And sometimes when you open this, it might be uh, the options may all be minimized. So you can see there's a little uh, downward arrow chevron here that says expand the create points dialog. So expand that. And I'm not going to be changing the default layer, but I will be changing a couple of things in the points creation. And one thing is if you leave the prompt for elevation set at manual every time you go to enter a point and create that point, uh, Civil 3D is going to ask you what elevation you would like to use. In this case, what I think I'll do is I'll just set all the property corners at elevation zero. And then on the house, maybe we'll say the top of foundation is going to be at elevation 100. So we'll create those points at elevation 100. So if I click on prompt for elevations on the, where it says manual, you see you have the option for automatic and none. I've had some problems with data collectors that don't like the elevation set at none. So I, I typically will use automatic. And then you can see here on the default elevation, it's preset for zero. But uh, if it's not, you've been doing other point creations, set that to zero. And the same thing with point descriptions. It's set for manual so that each time you create a point, you'll be asked what description you'd like to use. But all of these, just using two descriptions, IP for all the lock corners and HSE house for all the house corners. So I'm going to select, again, automatic. But you do have other objects, automatic object, uh, manual again, and none. I'm going to select automatic. And then down where it says default description, I am going to type in IP. Now I have a description key set up that will automatically apply a point style and a point label style. And you'll notice over here I've created two point groups, called one called house corners and one called IP at lock corners. So that will filter the points and allow me to override the description key values uh, if I'd like to at some point. Okay, so then I'm going to expand point identity. 
and it says the next point number is 1 because there aren't any points in this drawing, so that's correct. But if you add other points, it's going to select the next available, the lowest next available point number. But if you want to start numbering at 100, 200, 1,000, whatever, you can enter that here. It's set up to use sequential point numbering by a point number offset of 1. So we'll create point 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And if you'd like to have a, a blocking scheme where you have a block of available point numbers in between, then obviously you know, you can do a point number offset that's greater than 1. And I could see where there might be some uses for that, but uh, again, I'm just going to keep this simple. We're going to use uh, the next point number as 1 and offset that uh, sequentially by 1. So the nice thing about uh, all screens like this in AutoCAD Civil 3D, but the Create Point screen, is you can move that off screen to a second uh, monitor if you're using that, which you can't see right now because I'm just uh, collecting uh, this video on one screen. But for that reason, I'll keep it open here. But typically, I would move this over to a second screen so it's out of my way. And the next step is you'll see that there's a miscellaneous manual drop-down list, which is the first upper left-hand uh, selection that you can make. And right on top is the manual option. So I'm going to click that. And so now I'm just going to click. I have the object snap set for endpoint. Going to click all the endpoints of the property lines where the record plat theoretically calls for iron pipes. And, you know, again, I had a description key set up to recognize IP. It drew in a symbol and then put the, uh, the point and, it, and the point label uh, style, it applied the correct layers and all that good stuff. But you'll notice over here that the point group recognized that there are now matching points uh, in the drawing for that point group. So all I'll just do is do update. And then if I click at IP at lock corners, you'll see all the points, points 1 through 10 which have the description IP. All right, so now we've created points at every lock corner and given it the description that we wanted. Let's go back to the Create Points dialog and change the elevation. I'm still going to keep the uh, prompt for elevations at automatic, but I'm going to change the default elevation to 100, and then Again, the prompt for descriptions is still at automatic, but I'm going to change the description to HSE. You'll notice that the next available point number is 11, so it, it kept track of that. Again, going to click and select manual, and I'll just zoom in here for a minute, and I'll select the end point for each corner of the house. Let's close the Create Points dialog box. We don't need that right now. And again, the house corners point group needs to be updated. I'll update them all. And if we click on the house corner point group, you'll see we now have points 11 through 16. So now we've manually created points on the objects in the drawing that we wanted to. And if this was something that, you know, maybe the record information matched up exactly to field information, you could go in and on this assumed uh, coordinate system, you could start laying out and uh, doing it. But that, that's probably not what would happen, is you'll probably do a field survey, and maybe you'll find a couple of the record monuments and they check out pretty close but you'd like to either hold those or hold those and go out and look for some additional markers well and obviously I don't have that field survey in here to show you but let's just say in rotating this I'm really rotating it and moving it onto the field monument so it matches up to that what's nice about it is all the points because they're not survey points they're civil points they all moved and update it automatically. You just have to be careful that you select everything that you want to move and uh, rotate. 
And now you could upload this to your data collector and go out and, and find uh, some additional points or do the layout. So very handy tool if you're trying to work off of somebody else's drawing. You're, ch you're creating a plat information and working off of that and then at some point you'll rotate and transform that into your actual survey results. So this has been Eric Colburn from ericcolburn.com with your AutoCAD Civil 3D for Land Surveyors video. Please leave a comment below, and if you like this video and would like to see other of my videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit ericcolburn.com where there are additional land surveying and AutoCAD Civil 3D resources. Thank you, work smart, and be brilliant.